Excellent. I want to burn that piece by the office. Wind's just right and burning real nice. Now I know what you're thinking, but it's okay. This is not an act of arson or a wildfire. And no, he's not crazy. He's actually the burn boss, the leader of a highly skilled fire team. And they actually started this fire. Usually thought of as only destructive, fire is necessary for many plants and animals around the world and for the water we drink. Here in Florida, we get that water from rain, which flows through the ground. If we do not burn any of this stuff and the ground begins to develop lots of layers of vegetation, it takes a lot longer for water to get down, and some water may just simply pool on top and evaporate back up. So with areas that have a lot of exposed ground, allows the water to really sink down into the aquifers quickly and allows the quantity of water to be as good as it can be. So our ability to put fire on these natural areas really benefits people. Tell that to the people living within 300 feet of this. Yet on the day of this fire, no complaints were made. Many residents here understand that this intentional fire was in part set to minimize or prevent an unintentional wildfire. A controlled burn is also known as a prescribed fire because when the doctor gives you a prescription, he's trying to give you something or a specific goal or a function. And there's lots of reasons why we actually conduct these prescribed fires. They could be for the benefit of the animals within the site. They could be for the benefit of the plant species. They could be for the benefit of people that live nearby. So it benefits people, plants, and animals. And sometimes, and actually more often than not, a good prescription benefits everything. By reducing the fuel or things that burn, you're reducing the potential for an out-of-control fire. In other words, you can actually use fire to fight fire, protecting people and their homes. And before fire ever helped us with water and protection, it's been shaping this habitat for millions of years. Florida is positioned in a unique place where we have more lightning strikes per square mile than anywhere else in the United States. What that means is, over a long period of time, these plants and animals have been bombarded with lightning continuously. And so the plants and animals have developed lots of great adaptations to deal with and depend upon fire. One plant suited to fire is the namesake of this ecosystem, the longleaf pine. It actually promotes and then takes advantage of fire. Its pine needles fall and make for easy and quick burning fuel. And when fire comes around, the tree's loose flaky bark falls off so fire can't take hold. After surviving the fire, the tree's seeds then have exposed and nutrient-rich soil to germinate in. An amazing animal, both dependent and uniquely suited to fire, is the gopher tortoise. These professional diggers depend on quick-growing grasses that are first to sprout after a fire clears an area. During the fire, their burrows offer shelter for the tortoise, and over 200 other animal species call it home. That's a lot riding on a tortoise in fire but keeping fire on this land is easier said than done. We have been changing the face of this landscape. Humans have come in, put in roads and houses and things, and in doing so, we have obstructed what once was a flow of fire through the landscape. When lightning or people would do fires, fire would just simply flow and stop when it just simply stopped. But we can't allow that to happen anymore. So we have to take upon us a mantle of responsibility to put fire back on this landscape. The torch has been passed literally from lightning to us. So we're taking the place of that, looking at what is best for the ecology of the landscape and the safety of people that live next to these sites. Alongside the plants and animals of this ecosystem, we too have adapted to and become dependent on fire. Short of grabbing a literal torch, there's a lot we can do to carry it. These young scientists at the Disney Wilderness Preserve outside of Orlando, Florida, are taking part in a controlled burn, monitoring weather conditions to keeping fire within prescribed lines. And if you can't stand the heat, get out into the preserve's other areas to help track invasive species or monitor important wildlife like Florida's only endemic bird, the scrub jay. We have in Florida an incredibly diverse amount of life. If we find them within areas that are preserved and managed for wildlife and plants, we can apply fire at a set interval based on ecological principles to maintain those species. So in a way, like a gardener would, a gardener would apply the right amount of water, fertilizer, tension to grow a crop. 
by applying fire at a certain time, we essentially are growing a crop of a really healthy longleaf ecosystem. An ecosystem that yields crops like longleaf pine, gopher tortoises, and drinking water. Nature works hard, and that's why we work hard for nature.